Carl, well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Okay. Um, sometimes, always, never. People who don't know anything about the film, how do you summarise what this is all about? It's a story of, um, of a father and son who don't appear to get on too well. And that's because we later find out there was an older son who disappeared 10 years earlier over a game of Scrabble, bizarrely. Um, so the job of the film, really, is to kind of repair father and son's relationship and possibly find this you know, missing child from 10 years ago. Um, so that, that's kind of roughly what it is. And it's a pretty unique, unique story. So how, what was the first sparks of this idea and then why did you want to make a film about the story? Well, the idea came from, initially, Frank, uh, Frank Cultural Boyce had written a short story called Triple Word Score. And we both wanted to make it into a film and then tried, yeah. Frank wrote a script and then for years we tried to get it made and it nearly got made, then did. Then nearly got made, then it did. And then it did. Um, so and I wanted to make it because I quite like, I was trying to make a film which was very optimistic. Uh, that was important to me. And I also quite like the idea of Scrabble in a film. The film isn't a film about Scrabble, but it is a film about Scrabble. And it's a film where you're looking at a family that don't communicate, but are obsessed with words. And that, that just intrigues me, so kind of that's the reason. And you've got a fantastic cast there, Mark Lee, Bill Nye, and Sam Riley as well. How did you put this cast together? How was it working with them? Well, we, we had a casting agent, and I would talk to her at a great length. Um, and I was asked on a wish list, who would you have playing the dad? Said, and I said, on a wish list, Bill Nye. And then, to my absolute surprise and joy, um, Bill took the job. So, like Bill, uh, yeah, so Bill uh, accepted the role. I was, uh, you know, I was over the moon. I, I never thought in a million years I'd get Bill. But they said, someone said to me, one of the producers said, "Wish list, go for the person you want more than anyone." And I said, "Bill Knight." Nice. And then um, fast forward, and we get on like a house on fire. He's kind of been almost a staple, I guess, of kind of a lot of like British film. So, you know, was it, how was it working with him and, and developing the character with him? Working with Bill is, is a very pleasant experience. I think also as well, he's because he's, he's such a brilliant actor, um, he, he's easy to work with because he's a brilliant actor. He loves you to push him. He loves that. So we try to do that with him as well. Um, but also he's got great manners. And he's very pleasant to be around. And I think when you're, when you're surrounded by people of that ill, whether it's the crew and the cast, I think once you've got that, that sense of, oh, I can do anything I want here, because I'm not going to be told off or I'm not going to look like an idiot. When you've got that kind of world, um, life's easier and it's a lot better anyway. And Bill kind of, he kind of creates, as soon as he walks on set, you feel like that with Bill. As soon as he walks on set, you know it's going to be good this. And he's very polite, he's, you know, he's very respectful of everyone. You know, great manners, really good manners, and a brilliant actor. And then, what would you say some of the themes that might emerge from the film? You know, we're talking about like maybe family, a lot of words, but then you also think there's, you know, optimism in there. You know, what do you think the themes are, what people are going to take away? Well, the themes of the film, I suppose the theme, one of the themes, well, family is certainly a big, important theme in the film. I think also loss as well, and trying to understand what loss is. Because um, we all lose someone at some point in our lives, you know, we have to. Um, but for someone to leave the house and not come back, um, it's like, well, it's heartbreaking. So I'm not sure how I, how I would deal with that. I don't know what I would do. Um, but what I was trying to do with the film was really turn the story more towards about well, Bill finding his missing son, but his missing son as in Sam, the son the son who lives two or three streets away from him. That's the one he needs to find, because if he finds him, then he can find resolution with the other missing son. And maybe one day he'll find him, maybe that lad's still alive, you know. Maybe he's a 50-year-old man, or whatever age he would be, um, living somewhere, maybe. I, you know, me and Frank don't know the answer to that, because it was never written. Um, so yet yeah, maybe, maybe that lad is still alive. But until he sorts out the issues with his own son, until he finds his own son, 
until his son finds his dad again. Nothing's going to change. That's why I use a lot of back projection. Because I was trying to portray in those scenes, um, the deliberate use of back projection was to suggest that um, whenever we see them moving, when we see father and son move, they're always stuck in the past. That's why the kind of you know, like cheap back, which wasn't that cheap by the way, uh, the cheap back projection is a deliberate way of me trying to visually say, these people are just stuck in the past and nothing will change until they change. So that was kind of the reason for, and some of the set design as well. That's why the film has a slightly retro look to it. Although it looks, it's contemporary, but there's a slightly retro look to it. And it is about the past. It's about trying to always suggest they're not moving on. Everything has been parked and it's been left there for, for a long time. So that's the idea. And we were talking a bit earlier about um, the London Film Festival. So is it great for it to be part of this? And, you know, are there any other films you're looking forward to seeing? I mean, when it got um, selected for the London Film Festival, uh, I was thrilled. Um, yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled. I mean, who wouldn't be thrilled? So I'm you know, overjoyed that it's here. Because it's a big statement. Getting a film into this film festival is a big statement. It's an international statement. So, yeah, so that's all great. Uh, the downside to being at the London Film Festival when you've got a film is trying to see films. Um, so I've desperately tried to see a lot of films. And so far, I've only seen one, a film called Thunder Road, which I loved. And I'm desperate to see the uh, Trojan Records documentary. Um, but I've got no chance of seeing that tonight. And it's on tonight, it's premiere. But, um, but I'd love to see that. But there's so many films I'd love to see. You know, but Stan and Ollie, absolutely love to see that. The list goes on and on. Yeah. <laughs> you have to find time. All right, well, fantastic. Thanks so much for speaking with us and congratulations on a brilliant film. Thank you for having me.